Hi guys, Sajjad Hussain again with a new video. In this video, I am going to use example 4 of the same book, that is the guide to the use of wind load provision of ASC 702. Although I am going to take this example, but I shall not be using ASC 702, rather I shall be using ASC 716 to define the wind load on this structure. So let's see what the problem is and how it is defined over here. It is said that in this example, velocity pressure for the office building of example 3. For that, you can check my last two videos where I have discussed this example 3, where the building was 100 by 200 feet and 160 feet high. When it is located on an escarpment. So this is the difference between this problem and the previous problem. In example number 3, it was without the escarpment and now it is said that it is located on an escarpment as determined. Design pressure for the main wind force resisting system and component and cladding can be determined in the same manner as example 3. For which you can see my last two detailed videos. Once velocity pressure QZ and QH are determined. So basically, in this example, the idea is to calculate the QZ and QH values. Rest of the procedure is the same. You can define the wind pressure for main wind, resist, wind force resisting system and component cladding as it is defined in uh, my previous videos. The building is illustrated in figure 310. Data are provided below. So here the location is a city in Alaska, escarpment as shown. The train is suburban. The building dimensions are 100 feet by 200 feet in plan. Roof height is 157 feet with 3 feet parapet. There is a roof is flat. The framing system is reinforced concrete rigid frame in both directions. Floor and roof slabs provide diaphragm action. Fundamental natural frequency is greater than 1. And of course the cladding is mullions for gla glazing panels which are 11 feet between floors. And the spacing of the mullions is 5 feet. Exposure category for the wind is B. Occupancy is category 2. Wind velocity is 120 mile per hour. Same as example 3. And here is the figure. It is shown that the building is on an escarpment which is 150 feet from the edge of the escarpment. Total height of the escarpment is 80 feet. Now, Please note that the LH is measured from the mean mid height to top of the slope and X is taken from the front of the building. So here the LH is 100, X is equals to 50 and then as per this the values are calculated for QZ. Here we have to define KZT as calculated over here. Now the difference is being on an escarpment that we have to determine the value of KZT which is explained over here and similar procedure we will be following in ASC 716. So let's go to ASC 716 and let's see what the problem is here. If you open 716 section 26.8, that is the topographic effect, it's para 26.8.1 says that the wind speed up over hills, ridges and escarpments. Wind speed up effect at isolated hills, ridges and encarpments constituting abrupt changes in the general topography located in any exposure category shall be included in the determination of wind load when the site 
conditions and location of building and other structure structures meet all the following conditions so what are the conditions condition number 1 it says the hill ridge or escarpment is isolated and unobstructed upwind by other similar topographic feature of comparable height for 100 times the height of the topographic feature that means 100 into h or 2 miles whichever is less this distance shall be measured horizontally from the point at which the height h of the hill ridge or escarpment is determined so this is the first condition that within uh, an approximately 2 mile area another thing should not be there another ridge etc should not be there <clears throat> the second condition is the hill ridge or escarpment produces above the height of the upwind terrain feature within a 2 mile radius in any quadrant by a factor of 2 or more the third condition is the building or other structure is located as shown in figure 26.8 i'll show the figure above in the upper one half of a hill or ridge or near the crest of an escarpment and h upon lh should be greater than 0.2 h is greater than or equal to 15 feet for exposure c and d and it should be greater than 60 feet for exposure b for us so 60 feet is the condition now going back to the figure 26.8.1 here so here are the two cases the escarpment is shown as here and the 2d ridge or a 3d axisymmetrical hill is shown over here <coughs> and here the multipliers like k1 k2 and k3 is shown please note here this is not k2 this is k3 <coughs> here is a typo mistake it should be k3 so please note it it is k3 and then these parameters are defined over here like what the notations are and the equation for the calculation of kzt is equal to 1 plus k1 into k2 into k3 whole square where k1 is determined from the table above sorry it it is table above basically and k2 is 1 minus absolute value of x divided by mu into lh and k3 is exponent minus gamma into z into lh please note here this is not y this is gamma and gamma is given over here the value of gamma is given over here so in this table there are two typo mistakes <coughs> and you should be aware of it now let us apply these conditions in our calculation so what i did i used my excel sheet before here the topographic factor kz was defined as 1 but now i said please see table below so now in table here when i calculate the structural pressure i added these two columns k3 and kzt so finally kzt is over here and then i am going to calculate qz so i am going to show you how this k3 and kzt is calculated over here so what i did i took this figure and pasted over here and the these tables for k1 k2 and k3 multiplier so same figure i pasted over here for my reference this is my case for escarpment the value of k1 is reproduced over here value of k2 is reproduced over here value of k3 is reproduced over here all these conditions are copied over here now and the parameters for is speed up over hills and escarpment is reproduced over here this is the same table which i showed you here 
So just as a quick reference and quick calculation, I reproduce this table over here. Now, as per my figure, if you remember, let me show you the figure once again. Here X is 50, LH is 100. So these values are summarized here. X is equals to 50 feet, LH is 100 feet, H is equals to 80 feet which is given over here, H is equals to 80 feet, then H upon LH is 0 0.8 and from this the value is taken from the table which is 0 0.43. Here it is said that C node B above. Here is the node A, B and C. When we calculate these, these multipliers, we have to see for node A, B and C. So here the node A, B and C, it says for values of H over LH and X over LH and Z over LH, other than those shown linear interpolation is permitted. Second thing is, the node B says, for H upon LH is greater than 0.5, assume that H upon LH is equal to 0.5. So whatever value is here, assume this value is applicable for evaluating K1. And substitute 2H for LH for evaluating K2 and K3. So the same conditions are applied here and I, I calculated K2 like this where my formula is here. This is the same formula as mentioned here and all these parameters are selected. Let me show you. So absolute value of X, so this value its absolute value is taken divided by mu so instead of mu is equals to 0.4 and then for LH I am taking 2 times H which is here. So all these conditions are applicable here and it is calculated like this. So K1 and K2 are here. K3 Based on this equation, K3 is calculated over here. So, with this equation, K3 is calculated and for all values, K3 is calculated and then based on this, KZT is calculated once again and KZT is calculated for all the heights. And similarly, now QZ is calculated. Now, you notice that just QZ here is higher and then it goes little bit down and then again it goes up which is in line with the graph shown over here you can see an increase in the pressure is there and then is it gradually goes to the actual value so i can say that qz is calculated over here <coughs> And since I have already used this table to calculate the windward, leeward, etc., so automatically all the values are modified. So in this way, you can calculate the windward, leeward, and the roof pressure, etc., internal pressure, etc. So basically, the 
purpose of this video was to show the, the to show you how to calculate the wind pressure for a building which is on an escarpment so hopefully you will like this video and please do not forget to, to subscribe my channel in this example since I have already developed my my two videos before so you can see those two videos for further details that how the, the wind load for main wind force resisting system is calculated and how the, the wind force for the component and cladding is cal calculated. It is just a mere repeat of the same, same, same video. So that's why I'm going to conclude it now. Thank you very much. If you have any comment, please write down your comments so that I can reply. Thanks a lot. Bye.